Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Health Forensics. And we're here to review this experiment. Now, this experiment involved growing Dicambachia plants with shungite. And uh, shungite is a mineral that is found in the ground. And in this case, it was found in Russia and turned into a pyramid, a tile, and if we go over here, we can see a pendant. So we've got a little shungite pendant. And it's known for its health benefits. And this particular experiment was done to see whether we could use the properties of shungite to offset radio frequency damage in plants. And we had a variety of different levels of success with that mission. And we're gonna go through that right now. So this experiment is ran in a home that has extensive radio frequency going through it. And that's coming from three cell phone towers about 2000 to 2300 feet away. And a microwave alarm sensor in the living room. And also transmitting utility meters that are installed throughout the community. So we're gonna start with this one. And this is the best plant by far, and it's the one with the pendant. So the presence of this pendant appears to be giving an energy boost to this plant, and the plant is doing very, very well for a Dicambachia in my home. Now the Dicambachia typically has leaves the size of your hand, and they typically retard in my home, and this has some level of retardation, and that is from the radio frequency exposures. But you can see that the, the leaves are actually very, very good for what I get in my home. It's probably one of the best plants I've grown in the home. And it's putting up very nice patterned leaves that are dark. So certainly this one is doing very, very well. Now this one was grown in a different location. so. This one here with the pendant was grown in my office, which is further away from the transmitting utility meters than this one. So this one was grown very close to the transmitting utility meters in my kitchen. And you can see it's a little bit shorter. And it's also not as well developed. And you can see the leaves are more deformed and they still have the patterning, but it's not as pronounced in this plant. And this one is getting shungite water, and I have that over here. So inside this bag is a bunch of shungite rocks, and I leave it soaking in water, and once a week I will pour the water on this plant. So this plant has been getting shungite water. And it's been doing very, very well for the location it was installed into. And it's probably one of the best plants that I've actually been able to grow in that particular location near the transmitting utility meters. So I would have to say that there is certainly some benefits to this shungite water for the Dicambachia plant. Now, these two are a little bit sad because they kept repeatedly dying. So you can see that this was a shungite tile and it was first started in July 2013 and it died and was replaced in November 2013. And it's now January 2016. And this is what we got. So we have a dead plant sitting on top of a shungite tile. And this is the Shungite Pyramid. It was a similar story. So it was started in July 2013 and it had to be replaced in November 2013. And it's dead. So I couldn't detect any beneficial effects from the Shungite Pyramid or the tile for the Dicambachia. And in this particular experiment actually appeared to be more harmful than good. 
So we had mixed results. We had good results with the pendant down here and we had good results with the shungite water and the pyramid and the tile were not so good. So that was my conclusion with shungite in this particular experiment. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.